Hello and welcome to Colour Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tianary, and I am going to be doing a series of tut well, not really tutorials, but videos on uh, this new engine that I'm currently making called RPG Engine. For those of you who do not know and haven't been following me on Twitter, what you may have noticed is I have been very slowly working on this new engine which is inspired by RPG Maker. Now in this video I'm primarily going to be just going through the code that's currently been done um, before I move on to other things and the reason why is because I wanted to get primarily the map generation and the collision stuff done before I actually started doing any videos on it. The reason why is because well, I haven't done it before, and I wanted to make sure that it was good enough to for me to basically come out and say, yeah, this works. I don't need to do anything else other than the fact that I'm not a very good programmer. <laughs> um, just to point that out. So, without further ado, let me go back to my web browser. This is RPGFL on github.com and there are going to be a few things that is going to be a bit different than from RPG Maker. Now, I'm not directly competing with RPG Maker, that's not the intention of this um, engine. What I am intending is to make it a bit better an RPG maker in the sense that it's not proprietary it's open source again I mean that's just one good thing about it already um, and there's a few other things that I want to come across to you today um, so if we go into here what you'll notice is there is a class called RPG which you saw just now in the editor and this does all of the movement code collision detection it does all of the event handling um, the player control using the keyboard and mouse um, it pretty much does everything now if you go into display and then to map right and we go into here what you will notice is most of this is just primarily to do with the map you've got two functions here which is switch map and get tile at position that is it nothing else um, and the reason why is because this class is specifically to do with just maps so if you ever wanted to make a game using any one of these utilities one of the great things about the design one of the ways in which I've designed this API is that if you want to just use a specific number of utilities in this engine like say um, you take one of these actions for example you can just build up on it change it slightly and then make it suitable for the game that you actually want to make most of this stuff is technically primarily designed with the goal of making it into this RPG class. But for the most part, they are just utilities at the end of the day. Just an easier way to split things up into APIs that make sense, right? So that's that. Now I'm going to go through the code, not on GitHub, but in my editor, to show you exactly what's going on, how it works, and why. Okay, so I've already added a few things into this, um, which are slightly different from what you saw on GitHub just now. And one of the primary reasons why is because um, I've started doing um, the test for implementing this stuff for example so we've got this um interp and parser for h script so that you can eventually add 
uh, scripting to this, but I haven't fully implemented all of it yet, which is why all of that is commented. Um, so if we go down to our enter frame and we find out what's going on here, just ignore this process events thing for the time being. So obviously, as I said at the start of this video, I went ahead and did all the collision and the movement detection and stuff like that. So I'm going to go through all of that first before I move on to the event processing, which is basically what I'm going to be doing in the next video and building up upon. So here we do some very, very basic stuff. Uh, so here we've got a speed of 0.15. We've got a delta move value, which is basically delta times speed. Uh, let's see. Yeah, delta. So we're basically getting the timer um, and we are determining basically how long ago it was since the last frame um, to determine how many pixels we've moved by. Then we check to see where the player is located, which cell they are in. So we take the player origin X and the player origin Y and we minus that by the position of the map, basically. This is camera offset X and camera offset Y. It shouldn't really be called that. <laughs> if I may be honest, it's ba it's, it is basically just the map position. Um, so that's what we're moving. We're moving the map position. Depending on what keys we press will depend on whether or not we're actually flooring it or sealing it. You're probably wondering why. Um, if I bring up paint.net to show you what I mean by that. So in here. <clears throat> when it eventually loads. Okay. So imagine you've got a series of grids. Right. I'm going to be crap at drawing this, but never mind. So imagine you have a series of grids, and they're all lines like that, right? And I'm just going to draw three lines. No, okay, maybe four. Maybe four. That'll do. Right. So imagine you've got these lines here. You've got this grid, your tar map, and in one of them, you've got your player. So maybe your player's here. That's a crap drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks weird. Um, so imagine your player's in that square there, and you want to move up or down. So up or down, right? Sorry, up or down left even so basically when we're moving it the actual position of our player is in that corner there right which would be 32 by 32 um but the actual location of the player is fixed in the middle of the screen because we want to make sure that the player is the main focal point and we want to move the map depending on which of which um, key we're, we're pressing. So if we're pressing W or A, when we're moving up or left, respectively, right, we want to basically determine what the next cell is going to be for that player. So in order to do that, what we do is we floor the camera offset X and the camera offset Y by dividing it by 32 first in order to get the actual tile location of that and then multiplying it again by 32 in order to get the um, integer value. Because if we divide it, it's going to end up being um, a float. And then obviously when we floor it, that'll sort of reevaluate as an integer. And then we multiply that by 32 to get the pixel value again. All right, if that makes sense. Um, and then we minus that result by wherever the player origin X and the player origin Y is. And this is basically the position that the player is in the screen, which is always going to be in the center, right? If that makes sense. So if we go back to here, if we now move right, 
or we move down what we basically want to do is we want to basically determine if the next cell that is going to move into is actually located here or here right and when we seal it we're actually doing this or uh, this I think for when we go down um, the reason we want to do that is because when we actually go to move right or down we want to determine if we can actually move into that cell or not now if we go back to here and we've we've got these two variables called move into cell x and move into cell y and the reason we do that seal is because we want to determine if we can in fact move into it and then we do these calculations here right so whether we're moving up down up down right left right yeah um, and then we do and then we plus or minus 32 accordingly and then we get the tile on the map to determine what that tile is and see if we can pass into that tile and if we can we can move right see where this is going so this is basically how the collision detection works I'm just checking to see if the tile we can move into it and that's why we do the seal for the s and d keys and the floor otherwise right then we do our movement code here which is a bit boring so i'm not going to go through that um basically all of this evaluation stuff here so basically what's going what's going on here is if you press just once on the a key oops if you press just once on the a key um your player will actually move left into the next square even if you've released the key to make sure that it actually flows as if you can only move in tiles and not in pixels right um so let me just go ahead and show you that in the nico target which is here so i'll actually show you what that's doing so as you can see if i just press d it is just moving into the next square if i hold and then release it then moves accordingly right and then obviously if i move or try to move off of the ground into the sea i can't now another thing is that if you very quickly um switch direction right normally okay there's a bit of a bug <laughs> normally it will finish going into the next square first before it then changes to changes direction which is normally what you would expect but for some reason it isn't working that way um but for the most part it works okay looks like i might need to look into that again anyway <coughs> excuse me anyway let's move on and go into the process events and where are we I don't know what I'm doing. Here we are. Okay. Process events. So the event system, the way that it works is when you, whenever you call any of these uh, functions up here, if we saw all of these commented uh, stuff here, we're setting all these variables. Whenever we call sh things like show text, for example, inside a script, and that script is then executed, what's really happening is we are adding an event to an event queue right and the event queue variable is here and it is an array of commands so let's go ahead and take a look at that shall we this is the command structure 
we've got different types um, we've got an on continue which is a string uh, this this on continue is basically checking to see if we can uh, if there's if that value is something then we want to basically make sure that we want to pause event processing until the event processor gets that exact value back when we process the event if that makes sense i'll give you an example in a minute um so yeah if we go back into here process events where are you there you are okay so when we go into here we're going to get the next command as you saw just now so we're getting all basically we want to process all of the events in the event queue so in rpg maker as you should know um, if you've ever used rpg maker when you move and then you press enter and there's an event in the direction that you're facing it will execute that event right and it will in fact process all of the events within that script onto the event queue and it will go in that exact order that's exactly what we want when we are doing it here at the end of the day this class is pretty much what rpg maker is with a bit extra put into place so this is kind of in a way um an open source implementation of rpg maker but anyway so when we go into here we want to basically check to see if the event processing has been paused and the result is not equal to whatever the on continue value of that command is and if it isn't return if it's null return in fact that should be first move that up here oops move that up here because that makes bit more sense now, i've started doing some stuff with this uh there's t there's this txt window um and we want to basically display some text there's this current event display which is basically a window um we get that event and down here we want to basically add an event listener and we want to add that child if it doesn't already exist what this event is doing is it is going to get whatever the result is and it's going to assign that with whatever the value is there if we go into here text window we can see that there is an event listener attached to the stage when whenever we, cr we create a new text window when we, whenever we press enter on the keyboard now when this text window is displayed it is going to dispatch that on continue event with the word confirm so what's basically happening is when we go back into the event process and we go through this event again on the next frame and someone's pressed enter right the user that result is then going to be equal to confirm and the current command oh that's already a bug actually um because that'll be the next command not the current command uh but anyway if the result is not equal to that is equal to that con continue then it's actually going to go through and onto the next event that's what it's supposed to do so really this should be up here before we assign that and if c dot continue is in fact not null oops so c dot on continue is not equal to empty then we want to basically say if i just add another variable up here doo -doo 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 -doo. 
There's a lot of cows in this. Uh, where shall I put it? Let's put it over now. Pirate var. Uh, what shall I call it? It really doesn't matter right now. Just want to make sure it works. Current command result. I don't know. Something like that. It doesn't really make sense for this purpose, but we'll call it that anyway for now. Going down here. Oops. Went too far. So that is going to be equal to C dot uncontinue. And then we want to check that current command result instead of C dot uncontinue. Right. And we probably want to make sure that that is in fact assigned to something first before we do that because on Nico it will not work. That'll be empty. Right. So that was equal to empty as well. And that can be a string because it's not going to be anything else. Right. Where was I? Oh yes. So we go through this uh, get co get next command. We get all these commands. We go through the event queue. We make sure that we remove it in order to get to the next command, if that makes sense. Um, and if we return null, then obviously that is the end of that. Um, and then we say, what do we say? Oops. Yeah. If it's null, the next command is null, it should. Where am I? Right, here we are. If the next command is null, then pause event processing should be false. That's what it should do. Right. Now we hit, we can't really test this code yet because I don't have anything to test it on. So let's do that, shall we? Uh so what I'm going to do is inside of my assets, I am going to go into maps. There's this one here. I am going to, hmm, shall I add it here? Should I? Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it here for now. It might change. It might change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a series of events. One of them is going to be an ID of zero. Uh, just going to have a script. Oops. That script is going to be show text. Um, now, the first value is zero because we don't have portraits implemented yet. Uh, let's have a look. Well, the next one is the text to show. So I am here. I'm just going to say, hello. How are you? <laughs> I'll do. Um, and the rest can be. Kept blank, I believe. Um, I'll do the same again here. And I am going to say I am fine. So this is basically just going to test to make sure that we are getting correctly from this text to this text um, and then exiting out so that we can move around again. Um, if that makes sense. So we want to basically get that event and that script. We want to be, we want to be able to execute it. Another thing that I didn't do is make sure in fact you know what i'm just going to make it auto play for now because there's different types of uh event triggers in rpg makeup but we're not going to get that far just yet so i'm just going to make it auto play so in here Now it's under map, I believe. So we know that. Oh, I 
forgot. Show map. It's under show map. I'm getting confused myself. Right. So it's in here. So what we want to do is we want to get that tarmap data. Is it really shouldn't be in here, but never mind. Uh, wait a minute, that won't. That won't. Okay. It'll be in the map. So what I'm going to do is get event at position. What am I doing? <laughs> um, and we basically just want to execute that event. So we'll just get the ID. We want to get the string, which is going to be the value of that uh, here, right? So we've got this events thing here. Uh, if we now go into, so let's see map data it's going to be a map data so if map data dot events it's not null so we want to check to see if it's not null or not uh, we're going to go through all of those events so events is equal to dynamic map data dot events like that for i in zero dot 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 event start length we basically want to get that event dynamic so if ev dot id is equal to id then we just want to return that script like that otherwise we just return null right So in here, I am going to say, uh, again, this is just test code. So I just want to make sure that it works. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, ID. So I'm going to say get event app position. ID, which is zero. Is it zero? Did I make it zero? Yeah. Okay. So we get that. And then we're just going to say execute code. And that is the string that gets returned from that. And let's see if it actually works. So first of all, the tile map will show and then it will execute the code. Right. GD test. I am going to say git. No, I'm not. I'm going to say hxlib run openfl build project.xml. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got some weird bug going on inside of hx for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but it does work. So let's go ahead. Let's run this. Hello, how are you? There we go. Why am I in the middle for? Well, I shouldn't be there. Set player location. Tile accent. What? Why? What? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Why is it doing that? I should be positioned at zero three, but I'm not. Okay, I am here. Sorry, one three. But execute code prevents that from happening for some reason. Why would it do that? Why would it do that for? Okay. 
That's weird. Yeah, that's a bit of a bug. Um, now, I don't know if the other thing, if the other text is being displayed or not. So let's go ahead and what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. I'll make this zero because that's the color there. So that's a bit of a bug, really. Probably wanna. So hello, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. Cool. Sort of. <laughs> Not quite. Um. So yeah. A few things need to be fixed. Um, but I'm going to leave it here for now. Because the video has probably gone on for quite a while already. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'll probably do this bug fix. And many other things. Um, outside of video content. M most of these. Most of this video content is just going to be basically me talking about the features of the engine currently and going through the code as it is at that time um, so they're not really going to be tutorials as I mentioned at the start of this video they're just going to be just talks about this engine what's been done so far and yeah pretty much so anyway thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.